Tenako Tokato, good evening and welcome into the breakdown. Well, there's two reasons to celebrate tonight. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, plus the All Blacks. Well, they have released the pressure valve somewhat after a ruthless response against Argentina. To get stuck into it all, Sir John Kerwin, Mills Mulayena, Justin Marshall, happy Father's Day to you three. Who got socks and scorched almonds this morning? Well, probably only one of these two, because <laughs> I'm in Auckland, so uh, I never made it home, so yeah, no, it's not me. What did you get, lads? I got a coffee in bed. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And an all-black one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How good was that? I got some whiskey glasses. Ooh. So, oh, nice. Obviously, uh, my kids are trying to encourage me to drink whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy to do. You've got nice children, don't you? Uh, but it's time for everyone to celebrate. Finally, we can celebrate, can't we, Marsha? It was a great performance. Oh, absolutely, we can. And, and wasn't it brilliant to see the All Blacks deliver? Yeah. And and more more than deliver, they were so clinical, they were so ruthless, efficient on what wasn't a very nice night in Hamilton. Uh, they completely shut Argentina out of the game. And they gave everybody a really positive night and, and a good vibe. And the people that braved the weather yeah. went home, although wet, very happy with what they witnessed. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were good, weren't they? I mean, uh, what a difference a week makes. And uh, the performance they, they had last night was exceptional. The way they went about it, um, everyone was, seemed to be on the same page. Um, and as you said, Marshy, I mean, um, there was a pretty decent crowd as well, and they all went away pretty happy considering what happened the week before, JK. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, it's been just this incredible journey over the last seven weeks. We have seen stuff from the All Blacks that we've never <laughs> seen before, right? Um, talk of divide between NZR and the players and, and performances, um, great, poor. And then last night, probably one out of the bag that you sort of go, OK. And, and Ian Foster's been under the pump and he would have been had a happy Father's Day and slept <laughs> incredibly well last night. But, but I think the interesting thing for me, and this is not just a New Zealand thing, Marshy, it's the inconsistency of performance right across the board. You see South Africa against Australia the week before, then last night they put that performance on. Us against Argentina, and then that performance last night. So, uh, is it... Well, you, when you're 3% off, you'd lose by three points three yeah. years ago. Now, if you're 3% off, it's going to be a bad night. Oh, mate, if you go to a theme park, <laughs> um, and there's a line for the roller coaster, I'm a million miles in the other direction. <laughs> I hate them. I hate the things. They, they frighten me to death. And that's what we've been on. And that's so unlike the All Blacks. Yeah. They don't put us on roller coasters. They're super consistent. Their rhythm is always good. And it's usually a winning rhythm. And they've been up and down and all over the place. So absolutely, what we've got to get to the crux to is why it's been happening, Mills, because ultimately, a lot of what is happening has been quite damaging yeah. to the All Black jersey. You know, the Irish beating us here on our own shores for the first time ever, then winning a series. Argentina beating us for the first time here. You know, when you see the team last night, you, th uh, you think, me oh my, how is it happening? Is everything forgotten now? Do you forget everything from no, the last you seven don't. weeks? No, you don't. No, no. And, and I think that's the key thing. And I, I know that the All Blacks will know that. Mm. But they'll still be hurting by that record that they have uh, started to accumulate to a negative. Mm. Uh, and they'll be really wanting to put that ship on a really clear pathway forward. Let's put this behind us and rebuild on what they started last night. Amazing performance. And now in two weeks' time, Mills, or... 12 days' time, they need another very good performance against Australia to, for everyone to go, well, that was a bump, you know, and, and coaches have come in and changed, and, you know, that's not easy, right? Changing coaches halfway through a tournament, not easy, but now we need to see them sort of take off from here. Yeah, absolutely, and I like his honesty. Like, I think last week it's always easy to come on when after a, on, on the back end of a really good win, but he came on last week and he said there's, you know, the, the preparation throughout the week, and he's got to look at himself first and foremost, and he did that. He fronted up to the guys, and what I've sort of got from that is a really good insight, that he fronts up on the things that he really got wrong, but then he goes away and, and fixes it. It's all right to be to front up and say, hey, guys, I got it wrong, got it wrong here, and consistently say that each week. But then the guys will then start to question, well, how, hang on, you're getting things wrong every single week. But he's real specific in what, in what they got wrong, the body height and stuff like that. But he also gives you a sort of an insight and, and an honest insight about what their preparation looked like. And obviously the, the, the non-23 were a big part, and they always are, Marshy. You know, they've got to set the tone throughout the week in terms of being Argentina, because it's always pretty tough when you don't get selected, but you've now got to pre prepare that team. And Jace Ryan sort of said it. So I, I love the honesty. I love the fact that he's sort of fronted up, considering, you know, that two weeks in a row. Um, but also the insights he's, he's given us on, you know, where they're at. He knows they've got to get better, JK. Absolutely they do. But I think 
the stuff that he's implemented in the short time he's been there, he's been really, really crucial on, on the stuff that he's actually presenting. I think you've basically got to bang on. The, the description of what he does, I don't think it's any secret in New Zealand rugby coaching circles that Jace Ryan's detail is unmatched. And you can hear it in the way that he speaks. You know, he's talking players going much square. He's talking about dual tackles. He's talking about the little micro elements in the game. If you're slightly off at test level, then you get beaten. And you, and you get beaten in those parts of the game, then ultimately you lose the game. So I don't think that's up for debate, how good he is at, at, his, at his detail in all departments. He's not, he's not just a line-out forward guy. You know, yeah. He does breakdown work. He, he does tackle techniques. So he's across the board. Real well balanced. Well, if you look at the stats last week, discipline was obviously a major issue. We're going to look at the stats from last night and the All Blacks. Well, they won everything, didn't they, JK? You mentioned three handling errors. Three in 80 minutes of rugby. It comes down to the contact, though. Um, for me, it was last week out-muscled at the contact. I mean, Jason spoke about how the Argentinian side held us up. Last night, front foot, smacking into guys getting over the advantage line, front forward ball, and, and, and front foot ball, and that just makes life a whole lot easier. You saw guys like Rico have more time, mm -hmm. Richie Moanga have more time, time to look up and see where the kick's gonna go. And so I think it came down to, I mean, the handling errors were amazing. I mean, it was pouring down for two hours yeah. Yeah. and three handling errors. And so that was exceptional. Um, but you know, I think the contact area is so important now that if you get that right and you can get some front foot ball, that's the most important part. And they started so aggressively. Um, they put the Argentinian side under pressure. I think we were sitting together, Marshy, and there was like seven errors in the first 20 minutes or something ridiculous from Which from they Argentina. forced them into yeah. with their aggression and with their tempo, with their line speed. And you look at the little parts within the game as well. You can look at breakdown efficiency. That was incredible. I don't really recall Argentina getting a legitimate one-on-one -on -one turnover, whereas the week before they got many. So they obviously did their homework there. But, you know, Samasoni Tokayahu who was outstanding on the night, 100% success rate yeah. at the line-out. Yeah. You know, so, like, there's guys out there that are not only doing the hard work within the game, they're making sure that they're doing their core roles like this to perfection, helped out by lifters and jumpers, of course. And it's, it's got to be on the back end of a lot of other, other things. But, you know, when you, when you put a game plan in together, like you talk, spoke about, you know, three handling areas went on a night that was absolutely pouring down. Mm. But then you go out there, and, and I like the fact, you know, Jason Ryan said they were comfortable without the ball. Because sometimes it's, it's really a hard thing, you know, and especially, you know, I'm used to remember being in the back thinking, oh, no, we're going to be tackling all day. But then all of a sudden, your focus has to now become, okay, when they kick the ball, you've got to do your role. Um, when the ball gets kicked out and it's our line out, I've got to do my run like Tokiaho did to make sure we hit it so there's no momentum change in what, in what we do. And so they're comfortable. I mean, yes, they were flash, but they were flash on the back end of getting some reward from being comfortable without the board. And that's what I really liked. You know, it wasn't a, a performance that you went out there and they said, oh, man, they ran them all over the park with out and out, you know, flair from their set piece and things like that. They were nice and patient. It was a really balanced display of, of you know, right across the board in terms of, you know, different aspects of the game that really came together nicely. Well, there's been no hiding uh, over the last month, has there? The critics have been out in full force, including us on the show here, uh, and that is part of the job. But, JK, 64 minutes for Sam Kane last night. Did he silence the critics? Oh, totally. Which um, you were one of, yeah, quite yeah. openly. You said that too, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, yeah. totally. And, um, you know, one of the concerns I have for Sam Whitelock and Sam Kane is we've got to get them to the World Cup. Mm. So he hasn't had a rest, and I thought he had a tired performance the week before, and I'm sure he'd be disappointed in himself. Um, he was outstanding last night, played with energy, uh, didn't do anything flash early, really set the tone defensively, and that's what you want from it. Often people talk about, you know, captaincy, and who makes the decision to kick for the corner or kick for goal. But it's about leadership without talking. And I thought he was really, really solid last night. I mean, it's the hardest job in the world, you know. And um, someone said, well, he's not your captain, JK. Well, he is, our, he is my captain, actually. Anyone who's played for the All Blacks, we see him as our captain. This is one big family behind him that, that want him to do well. So, yeah, he, he was not at his best the week before, and I thought it was a fatigue thing, but he came out last night and absolutely set the standard for the team on defence. And then his support play later on, Marsha, he just got those little lollies that we spoke about in support. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I, like, I, it was a faultless performance, but he's always had that game. And I, I think we spoke about it after the game as well, that... Everybody else within the mix to help him perform his role to his maximum. Everybody else fronted, 
offered themselves, cleaned rucks, where, so it enabled him to play that role that he plays so well that the All Blacks believe in him because he can play that role. You know, Artie was off the back of the scrum. You know, I hadn't seen him off the back of the scrum in three test matches. Three or four times he's off the back. Um, Shannon Frizzell was growing into his work again, nice and physical. He cleaned a hell of a lot more roles. When you think about it, he wasn't really carrying much in that test. Mm. You know, he's carrying tight, the odd pick and go, which freed up Sam Kane. So I, they, they, somehow the Lucy's got the balance right. Oh, they might have had, had a coffee like the Baxter in the middle <laughs> of the week, you know, and, uh, and chatted about stuff and got it right. Mills, how much weight and pressure do you think would have been on Sam and some of these other players in the last month? How much is pressure is on this captain? Oh, massive. I mean, if you had to think about what he went through in South Africa, mm. and that's why we kind of highlighted his performance in South Africa as well, and perhaps that, you know, when he came back, that big downer in terms of mentally. You're right, Marshy. He's always had that, you know, that in, in his game. He hits hard, he tackles hard, and, and perhaps when we look at it as, um, as spectators, we often think of yeah, the seven, he's got to fetch over the ball. That's one area that he used to be good at when he was, well, he's still very good at it. He just doesn't do it as much as what he used to when he was younger. And does he need to? And so when you go into a game where you're comfortable without the ball and you've got other guys that can get over the ball, that's probably an area where he just he strives. He goes, OK, I'm going to lead from the front, I'm going to smash bodies, um, you know, and I'll lead like that. The downside to that now, well, no, actually, it's a positive. You know, who is now going to be our feature? Because that's probably an, an element that in, in the All Blacks yeah. that they're, they're going to be thinking about. Because traditionally, we've always had a feature going in there and, and fetching that board. And Sam, I, I don't think at the moment we need to have Sam Kane worrying about that because traditionally we've always had seven seven. Perhaps we need someone else to actually suit that line of play. You're right. The, the seven role has changed. Like, like, when did you see Kremer over the th two test matches get over the ball? You know, the South African Lucys are not really over the ball. Maybe Quaker Smith gets over it a little bit. The last guy I can remember who has a genuine open side, definitely the French Lucys, and they're the best team in the world, they're all well balanced. Front row is getting yeah. over it. So th that role has changed. You know, like, uh, probably Michael Hooper's the only one out there at the moment that's still... Out and out. Um, ..is an out and out seven that gets over the ball. So, yeah. Uh, Sam Kane's evolved his game, which he needed to do, because the rest of the world has. So I think it's a hooker's role now. Sorry, Kirst. Part of it, yeah. Yeah, hooker's role is actually getting over the ball. But voce di corridoio. Oh, yes, we've had yeah. that in a while. That took a long time, mate. There we go. <laughs> hey. We're but, the you know, JK. Um, the last six weeks has been unprecedented as far as coaches being changed, yeah. um, all black coaches, you know, talking about getting the sack, you know, there's rumours out there that they even went down and met with Razor, Voce di Corridoio, don't know if it's true or not. <laughs> but who do you think the chairman rings? Who do you think um, the coach rings? You know, it all goes on to Sam Kane. And then you put last week's performance that he wouldn't have been happy with himself. It's a huge amount of pressure. Yeah. Mm. But that's how you should react, by leading your team, by changing your game, by being really solid on defence. So I was just really pleased for him as a person. But I want to come back and I want to ask you both this question. Um, the fatigue factor, Sam Lightlock, Sam Lightlock, Sam Kane, lots of miles on the... We need to get them to the World Cup to have... Because they talk about going to Everest. There's four games in a row. We need Dalton Populi with... with with game time. We need another lock to come in besides Barrett and Retallick, right? If we're going to get these guys to the World Cup. So how do we rest them now? Do we take some risks, Marcy? Or do we just go, we're going to play them and I not take them I think they still north. need to find their mojo and their rhythm and, yeah. and, and, and get their combos better before we think about putting players on the bench when they, when they don't necessarily need it. Why preserve for the World Cup? We've got to think about the now. Yeah, and the now, the, the, the now is the bleeders load. And, and yeah. I mean, he, I think he's really doing that. You know, Kane's been subbed off a few times yeah. already, so perhaps he's, he's starting to implement that before making sure that we win the now. And the, now, the next now is winning the bleeders load. Mm. Take them north? Yep, they'll go north. Get stuck in over there, mate. Put them all to the sword. Yeah. <laughs> That's our mojo. Yeah, yeah. Here's my Here word for you. Mojo. <laughs> <laughs> Would you not, JK? Would you not take them up north? Look, I'm just very concerned about making sure that our most experienced players yeah. are playing like 20-year-olds by the time they get to the World Cup. We don't need them fatigued, tired. And I'm pretty sure if we had won the first Argentinian <laughs> Test match, there might have been some rotation. I know we're not allowed to use that word anymore. Yeah. I'm just concerned that 10 days' time we've got Australia, 10 days later, you know, so how do we actually make sure we're protecting those guys that we need? Because it's the balance between youth and experience mm. that wins you World Cups. We know that. Mm.